Next up, I'm going to show you how to make a basket setting. So this is um, where they start to get a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's very similar to what we've done, it's just got way more structure to it. Um, so it's going to be a lot more rigid, it's going to be stronger, it's going to support the stone a lot more. Um, but because of that rigidity, um, it's precision that helps it do that. So this is all about getting the fit right. It's all about soldering it in precisely the right <laughs> position and things like that which is why like I say it's a little bit fiddlier but basically all a basket setting is made from our two jump loops and some wires that are going to become the prongs so the jump loops you could buy um, if you've got some but we're going to make them from scratch and I'm going to use some one mil brass wire so one mil round brass wire here I've got the stone that I want to set it's a 10 mil round smoky quartz faceted stone 10 mil round so what i'm going to do is i need to make a little jump loop that's going to be a tiny bit smaller than the widest part of this stone so i've got some one mil round brass wire some round nose pliers and i'm going to make a rough circle like that and then check the fit what you can do is get a mandrel or pencil sharpie whatever's the right size just true that off a bit and check it again so now it's just a tiny tiny bit smaller than the widest part of my stone so what I'm going to do is take my saw hold this on the very end of my bench peg and I'm going to cut through where the wires overlap That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to solder this together, but I also need to make one that's just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make another jump loop that fits inside here. Now I've got two jump loops. One sits inside the other. And after I solder them and make them perfectly round, they should be a nice fit on my stone. So I'm just going to go and solder them now. Flex my joins. And I'm going to pop a piece of solder under each one. So although I'm working with brass, I'm just using silver solder and it's hard silver solder. I want to use hard solder for pretty much every join that I do on this setting. So these just need cooling and cleaning and then I'm going to round them off and make them a good shape. Got my little jump loop soldered together, I'm going to put it onto my mandrel. This is a bezel mandrel, they are brilliant, they don't cost too much money. Um, so anybody who's going to be doing much stone setting I would recommend getting one. But otherwise you just need something that you can that will fit, that you can pop your, um, your jump loop onto. So it could be a doming punch, it could be a pencil, knitting needles, you get those in a range of sizes. And I'm just making it nice and round. I'm going to do the same with my little one. Making it nice and round. And then you want to check they're flat. If not, hit them. 
Next up, I've got two pieces of one mil round brass wire and I'm going to start exactly the same way I did with the basic settings. So I'm crossing the wires over, taking a hammer, tapping them. So I end up with a little recess on each wire, which is going to make them sit nicely when I solder them. So I'm going to go and solder them now. So exactly the same as before. I'm going to flux my join. Put it back together so those two little recesses sit together nicely. Take a piece of, oh, take a piece of solder. Using silver solder again, hard silver solder. And I'm putting it on my bottom wire but so it's buttered up against the edge of the top one. And I'm going to heat it until the solder runs. Got my cross, soldered together. So I'm going to take some flat pliers or some snipe nose pliers and try and do a side on so you can see. I'm going to bend the wires up. Like so. I'm trying to keep them nice and even. And this is what's going to form the prongs. And I need to get it to a stage where this jump loop sits nicely and evenly and straight in this little basket. So that's what the um, prong shape is called. There's a couple of tricks for getting that right. To get the jump loop to sit nicely and evenly in your basket, there's two main ways people go about it. You can either file little recesses in your jump loop so that it slots in, or you can file little recesses in your wires so the loop slots into that. I'm going to go for filing the, um, the jump loop. So the first thing that I'm going to do is put it in some space. And then I'm going to find my Sharpie. This was a better one. And I'm going to draw a line north, south, east and west, so directly opposite. Now obviously you could do this with a ruler. Now I've marked the points where I want those little divots to be. Again, there's different ways of going about it. What a lot of people do is they would now take their jeweler's saw, cut a little notch where each of those marks are, and then file that area away where the, um, the notch is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ring clamp. I'm going to clamp the jump loop so that those marks are just pointing out like so. So my little side marks are only just pointing out and then I'm going to take a little needle file, one with a nice sharp edge on it, and I'm going to file. So I'm running the file level with my, um, my ring clamp. So I've filed two of my sides and just to show you the other method, what you do is you take your Judas saw Hold your ring on the end of your bench peg and you're just going to cut a little notch in line with your mark and then same on the other side. This is the equivalent of using a centre punch before drilling so you're just notching a little guideline and then once you've got your little guide then you can get your needle file again and you can do your filing. You want to file about half the way through the width of your jump loop because it needs to be big enough a notch to help support it when it's sitting on those other wires but obviously you don't want to file all the way through or make it really really weak. So I've popped my little basket into my third hand tweezers so it's holding it for me and as you can see this now, um, the jump loop now sits 
in there because of those little um, north, south, east and west notches that I filed into it. So I'm just going to take that out a minute um, and then I need to flux it. When you're doing your fitting, to get it to be able to sit like that, the prongs need to be even. So the angle that they are pointing up needs to be pretty much the same all the way around. Um, and also if they're really springy, if they're really work hardened, then it's going to keep popping your, um, your jump loop back out again. So sometimes you need to anneal them. I'm just going to take my time, Ooh, try and get it back in. There we go. So now it's in, I just need to check that it's actually in nice and straight. That looks pretty straight and even to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some solder. I've got my silver solder again and I'm going to balance a bit of solder where each prong meets the, um, the jump loop. Now these bits of solder are not as big as they look because I've rolled them really, really thin. Oh, not torn off. If they fall off, put a little bit of flux on them, that helps them stick. There's a bit of solder where each prong meets the jump loop and I've got down at eye level and checked it's all nice and straight. So I'm just going to pop some goggles on. Light my torch and give it a heat. Just careful not to blow my bits of solder away so I'm heating it nice and gentle. I remember when you're soldering it's all about getting both elements that you're soldering together the same soldering temperature which is your red colour um, but you do need to pay attention where the flame is so that you're not accidentally heating an area of your, your metal that you don't mean to be and end up melting it. That's one of the biggest complaints I, he complaints I hear about prong setting is people melting their prongs or melting their baskets all the time. It's just about having good torch control, keeping an eye on um, what you're doing. That's the first part done. Looking fairly even, happy with that. So now I need to do exactly the same with my small one and it's going to be sitting and fitting underneath this one but it's going to be a bit fiddly again until I put those notches into it. But I'm just going to have a little feel just in case I can get away without the notches because sometimes you can with the bottom one can't even pick it up. I'm going to put my notches again. So I've drawn my north, south, east and west. I've got my saw. I'm going to cut my notches. I'm going to do that on all the points and then I'm going to give them a little file again until I've got halfway through. Right, I've filed my notches in, I'm going to flux it again, flux my jump loop. Oh, this camera has decided to keep twisting now and I've got no idea why. Stay. <laughs> keep fiddling with it and it won't stay put. Right, so I'm going to try and hold my basket as upright as possible. Oh, there we go, <laughs> stupid camera as upright as possible so it's easier to check whether or not I've got this in straight and then this is the fiddly bit so you need to sort of rotate it to get it into the middle Come on. and then line up your notches until they sit on the wires like that and then you just need to get down again and check everything is straight and even. Not quite, so I need to give it a little poke. 
once your basket's in, same as before, you're going to get some solder and pop it where the prong meets the jump rope. And just take your time doing this because you don't want to knock your positioning out. Remember, if the solder doesn't want to stick, add a little bit of flux to it. After placing your solder, you just want to check everything's still lined up, and if it is, then you're ready to solder. And again, just careful that you don't blow the solder away. Keep an eye on where you're pointing your torch, so you don't melt anything. Ooh. If it drops while soldering, you can give it a little tap, but you have to do it while the solder's molten, otherwise it won't move like that. One little basket. So. I'm just going to chop some of this extra length off, not all of it, because that's what we need to push over our stone. Just a little bit so it's not as in the way. So pop that in and give you a bit of an idea. It's looking like a nice fit. So what I can do now is I can cut away this bottom excess. So anything below the bottom jump loop. And now I'm going to file that completely flat. One file, one setting. So I'm just going to support it and I'm going to file it completely flat at the bottom. Remember with most files, they only cut in the forward motion so it's push and lift rather than scrubbing it back and forth. And I'm going to keep going until it looks like one uniform thing on the base. One little basket. So now I'm going to file a little recess where the very edge of my stone hits each of my prongs. I'm going to file a little recess so that it's thinner where that edge meets so that it can fold over nice and neat and then I'm going to trim off the excess length as well. I want to leave about a mil, um, mil from the edge of the stone left. So to do the filing, you can mark where it is if you need to. Um, with mine, it's very close to the top of my jump loop. So I'm just going to get my needle file and I'm just going to file my little recess. Filed the little internal recesses. I've snipped the top of the wires down. And now I just need to give them a little file. So there's various things you can do at this stage. You could um, you could round them off. You can file them into a point. It's just anything that um, makes them look a bit neater, but also so that they're not going to snag. One of the reasons people sometimes file them into a point is, especially if you're working with thicker metals, it just means it's easier to get the prongs to sit nice and flush to your stone rather than looking too big and bulky. Once I've filed these, I'm going to give them a little sand as well. Next, I'm 
next up I'm going to make a ring band for my setting to go onto. So I've got two bits of 1.5 square brass wire. I'm just going to flatten them out a little bit. Same with this one. I've got two because I'm going to make them as a double band. So I just need to get these to sit a bit flatter together and then I'm going to solder the middle section. That's looking better. I've got my two wires side by side on the soldering block. I've fluxed them and now I'm going to add some solder just to the middle section. Like so. Got my cross action tweezers ready in case I need to poke them a bit tighter together in a minute. But otherwise, I'm just getting them up to soldering temperature. A little squeeze. Starting to go. And there we go. I'm just going to flip it over and give it heat on the other side just to drag that solder through. soldered together and now I'm just going to splay because I just soldered the middle bit remember splay the ends apart like so and then I'm going to grab a ring mandrel and just by hand I'm going to shape it into a ring shape to try it on and then we can pull it down the ring mandrel until that's the right size so I'm pretty good and then what I need to do is cut away some of this excess so I'm going to take my basket setting I'm going to pop it on top of my ring and then I'm going to mark with sharpie where the width that this is and I'm going to cut that little section away. So I'm supporting my basket on there and marking where the basket sits. Just sharply marked the edges and then I'm going to cut where those marks are. While doing this, you have to support the piece of wire that you're cutting through at any given time. That's why it's jiggling around because I've got so much stuff in there. Cut through one side, so I'm going to turn it around, do the same on this side. For some reason, I have multiple marks, so I'm going to get my setting and just check its position again.
put back on my ring mandrel. There we go. So I'm going to pop that in the third hand tweezers. I'm going to flux it all. The flux the top of my setting and then I want to pop this on so it's lining up with the um, bottom of my setting. That's looking fairly good so I've lined up the displayed edges with the corners of my setting. Now it's in position I'm just going to add a little bit more flux and I'm going to add a piece of solder where the ring band joins the um, setting. Now I'm ready to solder it together. So if you remember from when we were soldering, um, the elements that you're soldering together need to be the same soldering temperature, but if something is very small and skinny, like my setting, and something is bigger and chunkier, like the ring band, then that doesn't mean heating the different bits the same amount. So what I'm doing is I'm angling my torch so I can get as much heat as possible through my ring band while avoiding the setting, and then when my ring band starts to go a nice pinky red, then I'm going to heat both sections that I want to join together. And once again I'm using the hard silver solder. I've used it for this entire construction of this piece. I always tend to use hard solder for absolutely everything. It's very rare that I use um, anything other than hard. There you go, it's looking good. So I just need to cool and pickle it. It looks like a ring! So I've given it a good sand and polish, just a little initial polish, and now I can pop my stone in, like so, and then I'm ready to set it again. So I just need to, oh, a couple of different ways you can do it, I could take some pliers, god my hands are shaky, and then what you do is you line the jaw of the plier up with one of the prongs and then squeeze the prong directly opposite and that starts to bend it over and then you do the same on the other side so line up and squeeze oh, it's popping out um, but the way I prefer to do it is just with my pusher like we've got a ring and it fits so I've just given it a really good sand and a li little initial polish so now I can pop my stone in and then I'm going to get my pusher again and again same as all the other times I'm going to start on one side push and rock and then go to the exact opposite push and rock and it'll start to form down so you just want to do the initial shaping first off and then um, we'll go back around to get it tighter in a minute now normally I would have this in a clamp, um, but because of the split shank it doesn't really fit, so what I might do, so I've got a bit more pressure, is put it on my ring mandrel, put my ring mandrel on the bench, and then I can carry on pushing but with a bit more um, effort this time. Now I've been using my pusher because it's what I've got, it's what we used last time when we were doing the cab setting, um, but you can actually get prong setting ones um, and they're basically the same as the pusher but they've just got a little notch in them to accommodate the wire and they come in different widths just depending on where you buy them so if you want you can use that instead so you line that little notch up with your prong and then you rock it over the stone and then same on the other side push and rock and then remember we're working at opposite so I'm trying to do it back to front so you can see well, I'm turning it around all the time. Push the rocket over the stone. Like so, and you just want to keep going until it's nice and tight. That's 
basket in there. One basket set, fasted stone. There you go. So as you can probably see, it's definitely more fiddly than previous things we've done before, but it's very much achievable. You just have to take your time, try not to get too frustrated if the balancing and lining up doesn't happen the first time. It's very easy to end up with a wonky basket. <laughs> um, it just comes with practice. But as you can see, you can get very pretty results. I'll do a close up of this in a moment once I get all the fluff out of it from polishing it and give it a proper clean. But anyway, that's how to do the more advanced one and obviously we covered the more basic one earlier as well. So let me know what you think. Have a go. See how you get on. Um, but I'm going to show you easier ways of achieving this tomorrow. One basket set. Fasted stone. Ring with a split band. See it's still all fluffy from polishing. It gives you an idea. It's fun to make. Not too fiddly, you just need to get used to doing that precision stuff. Take your time, don't be upset if you can't get your basket straight first time or get your jump rings to sit in it. It is fiddly, it takes a bit of... Um, trial and error before you get the hang of it so don't be put off and like I say you can always start with an easier setting like this one that we did in the earlier videos because it's still fun to make and it's a very good and very good introduction to the technique